This is not the Republicans versus the Democrats. This is the elites of the Republican and Democratic Party who have drawn this, driven this country into the ditch versus Donald J. Trump and the rest of America. I am originally from Venezuela and I am a proud American citizen. I endorse Donald Trump 100%. Well, I represent uh, moral values, a uh, physical conservative, and a uh, very uh, uh, ardent uh, Republican. I support him because I believe what he says, he's going to make America great again. I believe it. I believe he's going to make it great again for all people. African Americans, I think he's going to get in there and help those communities become better because he's going to make sure that they get educated, he's going to make sure that they're safe, and he's going to bring those communities together. And, and if America would give him a chance to prove it, I think we'll be happier for it. The bottom line is there's a, there's a great opportunity for us right now to change the trajectory of our country. And right now what we're seeing is people are frustrated with politicians and they want change. And the one way to accomplish change is to have someone who's never been a politician before come in and exert that influence, that business savvy on the, you know, on, on the country. And I believe it's a great opportunity for our country to be able to do that. A lot of people don't look at his policies. They don't listen to his full speeches. I have. And I think his full speeches about immigration are good. I think his full speeches about um, the finance are good. Uh, if you listen to him, then you understand him. I like that he's uh, taking the media and uh, called you out for what you are and uh, that the major multimedia has been run by our government and used um, to promote their agenda. And he just likes to give uh, America's the proper chance to increase their value of their dollar and better their family. Why I like Trump is I believe that he is going to be the one that helped unite America, not just political, uh, politically speaking, but racially speaking and in so many other ways. I think that he's going to be that person that's going to surround himself with great people to help not only restore our country, but to make our country great again. We're in a desperate situation now, and he's our ray of hope, and uh, we desperately need it. And I think the grassroots understand that, and I believe they're going to work harder than ever. And I myself will be starting a women's group for him, Women for Trump in Pennsylvania. And we, we absolutely need it because a lot of people wish that things change, but we have a chance, an opportunity, one opportunity to make it happen, and we can't lose this advantage. I also like the fact that Trump didn't support the Iraq war. I think it means that he was paying attention, just like I was at that time. And um, I think anybody that's paying attention, these issues are very clear. The Iraq war to me was very clear that we shouldn't have gone in there. And a lot of the issues that we're seeing in this presidential election are very clear to me. I think people should wake up because we're, allowed to, we're about to lose our freedoms in this country. And we really need to make a stand right now for Donald Trump. To win an election as a political strategist, I can tell you, you have to have a base. Historically, uh, blacks have not voted for Republicans in any significant numbers. However, what that means is that the party itself has to outreach in a substantive way. Mr. Trump is somebody who is refreshing, he's direct, he's to the point. Mr. Trump has a vision for America to make America great again as for everybody. That includes African Americans like myself, m millennials, women. He wants to bring jobs back to this country. Well, he is a beginner. He's not a politician. Thank you, God. We've got our hands full with those things and look what they've given us. A bunch of problems and craziness. No one can discount the fact that he's very, uh, very entertaining, <laughs> right? <laughs> so He's politically incorrect and I love him for it because we just had a Pope and a Supreme Court Justice back down to Donald Trump. If he's not one of the most powerful men in the world right now, who is? I like Trump because I feel like he's a real person and he actually speaks like a real person that I can relate to and not with just the political jargon and rhetoric that you always hear from the other candidates. I know that the Democrats use that as a line all the time, that they're going to work for the middle class, 
but I'm sorry, they do not work for the middle class. And they really don't work for anybody except themselves, as far as I'm concerned, especially Hillary Clinton. Well, one thing I hope that Trump can do is go after the Fed and fix the Fed. Well, it'll be the, you know, the immigration and jobs and the economy and our health care, you know, and I, th I know that Donald Trump will address all three of those. I'm not for Trump because I feel like his rhetoric is undoing all the work that we've done since 2012 to court Hispanics. That's false. The, What's false? About him being a racist. I mean, there's no, no proof of that. What, what, besides, what is a racist? What, a racist is saying that you think that your race is superior, and Trump is not a man like that. He doesn't think the white race is superior than the black race or any other race. And I think that people that know him and that have worked with him, they can vouch for that. And so I don't think that he's a racist at all. I think he's going to bring the people together. We are people that can think for ourselves, and we see exactly what is going on. He's not sexist at all. If you look at his organization, many women are top executives in, her organ in his organization. And I think that he has employed hundreds, thousands of immigrants. I think that he has said things that resonate in everyone's hearts and minds. The blacks are con convinced that he's a racist. The blacks who are uninformed. But the Americans who are paying attention they're going to vote for Trump. It's a false narrative that they try to put out there to do anything to discredit him because they know that he, from people that know him, that he's a man of character, integrity, he's loyal, and all of those are good characteristics for a man that is going to be a good leader and a leader that's able to bring people together because he understands. He's worked with people from all walks of life, black, white, Hispanic, all different races because he's been very successful man and you don't hear people coming out against him personally like that. He's very genuine to his employees and his people and um, I mean everyone that's endorsed him, the different pastors. All lives matter. If you say to me black lives matter I see that as racist. I don't like it. I'm upset, I'm angry when you say to me black lives matter, tell me all lives matter and then I say okay. You can't say to me black lives matter, that seems racist. How is it not racist? It, on its face, it, it, from the words, it's racist. All lives matter. If you start anywhere else from that, you lose me. He's a misogynist, he's a racist. There's no evidence in my view that he's any of the above. Look at his organization, look at who he's hired, look at where they are. Uh, in different aspects of his organization. To suggest otherwise, in my view, is simply a distraction uh, that the mainstream media in the U.S. enjoys engaging in. I have never in my lifetime seen black people come against the police the way that they do. Because when police are called into those communities, they come to protect them and to save them, not to harm them, and to have all this rhetoric and this, this divisiveness to come up in this young generation. I mean, we're here at a, at a, diff, a new generation in, 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 a, in our country for blacks. And that is not something you want to start instilling in these young black men right now, is to be against the police, the people that are going to protect them when they call and when they need them, especially in those crime-ridden communities like that. Well, he's not a racist and he's not a misogynist. If you go back before he started to run for uh, office, no one said he was racist, no one said he was misogynist. He even had Amarosa as his right-hand woman um, there on The Apprentice. She's black, she's from Akron, um, and she's a woman. Uh, not to mention he, uh, his golf course was the first golf course to actually uh, except African Americans, even when the citizens complain, he said no, he's still going to have it. We need to take care of our vets. We need to take care of Americans first. Immigration, oh my gosh, I'm for immigration, legal immigration. My parents were, are here legally. My father was born in Austin. My mom gave up her citizenship to her country to be an American citizen. My grandparents from my father's side entered the country legally and they worked their butts off to get what they had, okay? So legal immigration is fine. I'm upset that we're reclassifying illegals that are 17 and under as refugees and we're giving them our taxpayer money. Why is our American fits on the side of the road 
homeless, not getting the medical treatment they need? Why do we have kids starving? The subject of immigration is pretty huge in Texas. We've got a lot of the drug issues coming over the border. It's like flooding over the Texas border. Our, you know, ranches and things down on the border, I mean, the people don't feel safe. So we've got security issues, we've got drug issues, um, as well as obviously like the tax and health care and all the things that, you know, are taken advantage of by the ones that who aren't paying the taxes for those items. And so it's, it's a huge burden on the economy. You know, I, I, I look at those Hispanic lives and I say, I don't understand why you're working three jobs to try to help your family get ahead in this world. And, and, and all of a sudden, you know, all you're doing is taking that money and they're going to take it from you and give it to that guy over there doing nothing, just sitting under the tree, you know, enjoying life. I said, that's not the way it is. It's got to be the way you are, that you're working hard to try to get ahead. You ought to be able to keep what it is that you're making. The people that are coming illegally, many of them are great people, but some of them are drug pushers, some of them are rapists, and that doesn't mean that Mexicans are like that. That means that people that are coming into this country illegally from wherever they are, they're breaking the laws, and we should put an end to that. That open border allows anybody and everybody to come in just porously. And we have one of the highest unemployment rates in the district that I'm running in, and we have a lot of people that are looking for jobs but can't find work, and I think the immigration issues, rather it's the people that uh, President Obama, I'm sorry, has uh, placed in Florida without the acknowledgement of even some mayors in local areas. And it's not a race issue, it's a safety issue. And, uh, and I think that we need to recognize it as that. And I think the media so many times wants to twist it, turn it into a, a race issue. Every country in the world has its borders and uh, the United States has borders and the laws that are on the books should be enforced. I don't know why the world is upset that we want to enforce the laws here in this country. We need to, for the safety of every American, and I believe that Donald Trump is ready to do that. I don't trust Hillary Clinton at all. We've got to come together and recognize, too, that, you know, Muslim extremists, Islamic extremism, they, they want us dead. And we got to know who we're letting in. and. Uh, and it's not just about saying, hey, you're this religion, you can't come in, but we got to know, hey, do you feel this way? Are you willing to come and accept who we are? Because we're willing to accept who they are if they want to come live here peaceably. But if you want to come here and kill us, then we got to know we got to know that. And we have to be able to recognize and, and, and you know, put your foot down and say, hey, you can't you're not going to come in and change who we are. We can we can abide by the rules. But if you can't, then you can't be here. If Mexico educates their own people, they'll discover it's a great place to be and they won't have to come over here because they'll be educated. And the lack of education by a Mexican government and the cartel that controls them and kills 80, 80 mayors in one year, I can understand why people want to come here. One of the big arguments here is, is between globalism and nationalism. And I think uh, Donald Trump is really the only uh, person on either side that has been a nationalist. And I think Hillary is just a representation of the establishment and she's uh, all for globalism. I think she is a criminal. I think she should be tried for murder for what happened in Benghazi. If that didn't break your heart when Mrs. Smith spoke last night about her losing her son and the lies that Hillary Clinton told to this woman, that is criminal. She needs to go to prison. That is my humble opinion. I'm originally from Arkansas, so I'm very familiar with the Clintons. And I cannot even imagine this country under her leadership. I, I'm, it's a matter of fact, it scares me. That's why I'm out here, letting people know every chance I get that please, please take a chance on Trump because we know what we get with the, with the Clintons. And we don't want that. And we certainly don't want another term of Obama because we, the black community is hurting. Hillary's proposal to, to increase the number of Syrian refugees to 100,000 people and without knowing who they are and scatter them all across the country is dangerous and I think people in Montana are quite worried about that. She wants to have a new world order and that's a terrible thing to have. We can't all be under one umbrella. People have a right to choose where they live and as long as it's done legally and you're accepted in the community that you go to, you should be able to do that. But the community doesn't accept you you shouldn't be able to force your way into it. Oh, I remember Mina. I remember. Trump's sort of an odd duck, isn't he? He's a little different. But you know, 
he brings out stuff that no one else will talk about. You know, he calls her Crooked Hillary, which sounds kind of mean, but when you really delve into what goes on in her past, she really is crooked. She is a gangster. She's a mobster. She's like a mafia don, except she's the new level of mafia don. She's the new face. She's more sophisticated. More importantly, what about what she's done over the last um, eight years being part of the Obama administration and what will that look like for the next four years? And to me, that's a risk that I don't want to take. I think she's a danger to our country. I think Donald Trump is the candidate who will unite us. I think he will be smart enough to not only put wise advisors around him, but he would actually listen to their advice. She started her history of crookedness with the Nixon evidence. She trumped up evidence against Nixon and got kicked off the team that was trying to bring down Nixon because of her falseness. Then she, the next time she came up on the scene was the Arkansas Development Bank where she ran the law, uh, the Rose Law Firm with Webb Hubble and Webb Hubble and her vetted all the people that got the multi-billion and million dollar loans uh, in the Arkansas Development Bank. And so you gave a big campaign contribution to Hillary, I mean to Bill's uh, governor, gubernatorial uh, campaign. Then you got a multi-million dollar loan from the Arkansas Development Fund. I absolutely love and support Donald Trump. Donald Trump was the only one that gave our kids a voice. He gave my late son a voice when on June 16th he talked about illegal immigration. My son, Sergeant Brandon Mendoza, was a police officer in Mesa, Arizona, and he was killed by a repeat um, illegal criminal. The um, illegal had driven over 35 miles the wrong way on four different freeways, three times the legal limit, drunk, high on meth, and slammed head on into my son on his way home from work. He had just left um, a 12 hour shift with the Mesa Police Department protecting citizens, and he was killed by an illegal. And I'm here to get the story out because we don't want another family to experience the pain that we have and to make people more aware because the more I've talked about people from the East Coast and, and um, you know, the heartlands of America, they're unaware of what we're going through and the problems that are at the border. Mexico actually deports more illegals um, annually than the United States does. It's a felony to be in Mexico. They have a wall along their Guatemalan border to keep um, South Americans out of their country, and yet all they can do is condemn us for us wanting to do the same thing. Here. 25 to 30 Americans a day are being killed by illegals in this country, and the media is keeping that from us. I trust him. He stays in touch with just an ordinary citizen like Sabina and I. He has his fingers on the pulse of America and what the problems are. Donald Trump has had nothing but positive things to say, supportive things to say of Americans, and he knows what's what's wrong with this country. Uh, Trump is surprisingly very pro-LGBT, but I don't think he, I don't think that alone will get my support. I think that they use that as a major dividing factor in the parties, and I, I disagree that it should be. I mean, I see that there are some of the you know gays and lesbians that are in support of Trump. So I think it's. It shouldn't be a factor, but unfortunately, I think they've made it one in the media. I'm a minister, so I feel very passionately about my personal views on this issue. But, you know, I don't think that the United States needs to be, I don't think our government needs to be legislating religion. I think the same um, Constitution and Bill of Rights that gives me the freedom to choose and live how I believe gives the freedom to for another American to be gay or lesbian. And I don't think we should inter interfere with that. 1 Corinthians 5, Paul's teaching about sexual immorality in the church. And he says this about, about sexual immorality. He says, if it's outside the church, what business of it is mine? He said, but when you come in into the house, when you become part of the family of God, then the church has a responsibility to teach our values. The TPP, Trans-Pacific Partnership, is that what you're talking about? Yeah, it's a treaty that the Congress hasn't really made or voted on a treaty about. Every treaty is supposed to be voted on by the Congress. We all agree on that, okay. But it hasn't been. They're able to see one page per congressman, but they can't vote on it, all right? That's illegal. That's illegal, okay. So, so I'm against that. What I'm for is voting on it, give it to us, let the people see it, because that's the process. Let us, the people, see it, because the Congress are the people, and then we'll vote on it. But up the TPP, no, I'm against it, completely. 
Well, I'm definitely concerned about NAFTA and the TPP, and I really hope that he brings our country back to, you know, thriving in the industry and brings our jobs back from overseas. I'm all for um, him uh, being against the TPP. Um, I think it's just kind of a, a replay of, of NAFTA in many ways. And I think um, it's, it's been shown that uh, NAFTA really hurt the middle class and um, kind of decimated jobs in this country. I think the TPP will do the same. And I think it's these uh, global corporations that are driving these things. And Trump is, uh, is not bought and paid for. Um, he, he's not um, taking money from these big donors, these, these global multinationals. And I think that's huge. And I think he will support the American worker and, and bring jobs back. Daddy Bush and Brother Bush, um, they got their brother and son off of being the original Bernie Madoff. Neil Bush was a crook and he ruined a lot of individuals, so I'm glad he's not here. I'm glad the Bushes are not here. I think that we'll get the word out eventually and people will realize because their lives have not been improved. I mean, we have 94 million unemployed people in this country. Food stamps have quadrupled since Obama has been in. I mean, the country is in bad shape, and we are almost $20 trillion, I can't even say that word, in debt. That's, that's bad, really, really bad. Which of the two choices is be has the best mindset to provide safety and security to this country? Security from the standpoint of rebuilding our military and using it properly when it's, uh, you know, when we need to defend our critical interests and safety in terms of of whether we are going to be safe here at home. You know, I'm sure that people in Europe, because of what is happening there with the refugee crisis, wish they had someone in power that could kick ISIS butt. That man is Donald Trump. He would never allow that in the United States. Trump um, has said uh, good things about Putin in the sense that he would talk with him. Um, I still see this kind of Cold War mentality going on um, on both sides of the fence, the Republicans and the Democrats. Uh, you've got the neocon foreign policy on the right, uh, which is still trying to sell this um, Cold War mentality that we're, you know, it's, it's us against the Russians. And I, I think a lot of things have changed, especially when it comes to uh, dealing with ISIS in Syria. I mean, uh, I think we're on the wrong side of that and probably Russia's on the right side. He has been a successful entrepreneur, a successful CEO, a successful person in the media for, a million, for, for many years. He took a million dollars and turned it into 10 billion. And so that is a type of leadership, that's the type of uh, experience that you want for somebody to be at the top level of our country. People are uh, probably a, a, a little bit nervous, especially those in leadership, because they think, oh man, we, we can't control this guy. I mean, he's, he's out there on his own. So it does create some contentious situations. But, but, but I think the people, you know, have spoke. And that's who they want in the Republican circles. And hopefully in November, the whole U.S. of A. will speak for, uh, for, for Trump. The two-party duopoly that has given us endless war, erosion of our civil liberties, massive debt and borrowing. They have given us a foreign policy that is expensive and incoherent. And we are stone cold broke. So when Hillary Clinton decided to bomb Libya so that we could institute Sharia law to put the women of Libya back 2,000 years, we had to go to the national credit card to borrow the money for the bombing. 